Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make just a straightforward instructional video on how to use the six part E6 kit from Bellini. So here's the kit. I bought this from Freestyle. It is not given to me. It was not sent to me for free or anything like that. I paid regular price. And it's a one liter kit. So we're going to have a full liter of each of those six solutions. And we're going to walk through on what's in the box and how to mix it up and then how to use it. And I shot a roll of Kodak E100. We're going to see how that looks when we're done. Now, if you would like to help support this channel so I can get kits such as this, you can go up to my sustaining membership tab up there, or down here in the corner is a little super thanks tab and you can give just a little tip so that we can try to get more film, more kits, and show you how to do more stuff. So I do appreciate your support and it is put to good use here. So this kit is six solutions, not a three bath kit like the Arista kit that we used before. The three bath kits, by combining things, are kind of creating some shortcuts and compromises. Yes, there are fewer solutions. Yes, there are fewer steps. But you could have retained silver. You could have uh, less dye stability, things like that. So the E6 process was designed with a six bath kit in mind. That's the way Fuji Hunt sells theirs. Unfortunately, it's in such large quantities now that it's very hard to, uh, to use it all up, and it's hard to find in the US, if at all. Kodak no longer makes their stuff, so for the home user, if you want the six bath kit, Bellini's pretty much your only option. So let's go ahead, open up the box, and see what all is inside, and then how to mix it up. First off, we've got some instructions, it is mixing on one side, use on the other. Then we have our first developer that's going to create the black and white negative image. Then we have the reversal bath, and this is going to chemically fog all the remaining silver. Now we have the second developer or color developer. This is going to now develop the positive image and create the colored dyes. Next is the pre-bleach. This stabilizes the dyes as well as get the pH in the emulsion ready for the bleach step. Speaking of which, we now have the bleach step and that's going to reduce all of our silver back into a fixable form. And we have fixer so that we can now remove all that silver leaving just the positive dye image. And it looks like there is a little bottle of stabilizer. Technically that's a seventh bath and may not necessarily be required considering the pre-bleach should be stabilizing our dyes in modern E6 film. So that's pretty much what's in the box. Each of these are gonna mix up to a full liter. So let's walk through that real quick. As you can see, you just need to put in each bottle within a full liter of water. The technique I like to use, as you can see what I'm doing here, I'm rinsing out the solution as I fill up the measuring cup so that I can make sure I get the full amount. And then as I go, I put them in my glass bottles, label them so I don't get them mixed up with any of my other stuff. Cause I've got a lot of bottles around here. They all start to look the same. Once we have everything mixed up, we're ready to go. So this needs to be at 38 degrees Celsius, which is about a hundred and point two five Fahrenheit, somewhere in that area, just like C41 should be. So I have everything in my sous vide. We're gonna go ahead and get that warmed up and then start through the process. Now there is some flexibility with our development time on the first developer. This is going to kind of influence our contrast. So they give us a time of six to seven minutes. They have some extended times as we start to use the kit, but for the first few rolls, six to seven minutes. I'm going to use six because I shot outdoor scenes, which tend to be in full sunlight, like I shot, a little contrasty. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do it for six and leave it at that. Uh, I actually don't remember what Kodak's time was for their E6, because it's been a long time since I've used their stuff. I wanna say it was probably six and a half minutes. So somewhere in there. 
So this should give us a little bit of contrast control. The second developer, it's everything else is going to be a flat time. So uh, six minutes for me. The instructions are very clear. Do not use a pre-bath or pre-wash, pre-rinse, whatever you want to call it. So first developer, straight in, six minutes, agitate. Uh, first 15 seconds, continuous, and then five seconds every half minute from there on out. Once we're done, we are going to do a quick water rinse. This is going to act as sort of a stop as well. So give that just a two minutes of water rinse. Remember, it needs to stay at your temperature. So if you can't use running water like what I'm doing, then just a quick fill, agitate, and um, keep the same agitation routine for those two minutes should provide enough rinse for our purposes. Now you're gonna put in the reversal bath. This has the special instruction of agitating the first 15 seconds and then leaving it still for the remainder of the two minutes. With the reversal bath done, now we're going to go into the color developer and this is going to be for just a straight six minutes. Again, 15 seconds initial agitation, five seconds every half minute after that. With that step done, we're going to go straight into our pre-bleach. This is going to stop development and also change our pH ready for the bleach action. This is just a quick two minute bath. Again, agitate for the first 15 seconds and then let it sit for the remainder of the time. And now we do our bleach. And the bleach is going to be six minutes, agitate 15 seconds, and then five seconds every half minute like the rest, which is what we're gonna do the rest of the steps. And now that bleach is done, let's put in our fixer. And we're going to fix for a total of four minutes. Now the fixer is done, we just need to wash. You can either use three cycles of water or your usual uh, Ilford agitation scheme would be fine. Or you can use a continuous running wash like what I'm going to do here. Either way, if you want to start bringing that temperature down, you can in each subsequent bath, bring it down a few degrees, like 10 degrees or so each time, or you can Go ahead and have your stabilizer heated and uh, just use it at full temperature. That's what I'm going to do here.
Now that we've had the stabilizer, let's go ahead and hang it up and let it dry. Okay, so here are some of our results from this roll. And we've got some nice, nice light. I mean, look at how this is retained here with a full daylight without blowing anything out. That's pretty darn good, especially for a slide film, which is very high contrast normally. Now, so this whole roll is kind of just, um, I don't know, scouting shots for the uh, current project that I'm working on, which some of you have seen, which is kind of the changes here in my local area in terms of how things are kind of dying off. That was a little overexposed, but change the exposure. Yes, this is similar to one I did. I was just driving down that road. Decided to take a shot on it on here to see how the high contrast would work. And yeah, this, uh, this stuff turned out pretty good. We've got really great color. Uh, of course, that's depending on how this camera is color balanced. But excellent color, excellent contrast, excellent control of contrast. And overall, I am very, very pleased with how this six bath kit worked out. All right, let's go back to the other camera position and, uh, and sum up. And that's our process. It is not a difficult process. It just has quite a number of steps, but it is no more difficult than black and white or even C41. Just got to make sure you get your temperature up. That's where the sous vide comes in handy. Mine, for those of you who ask because you don't see the other videos, that's all right. It's just the cheapest model from Amazon. Uh, I paid at the time like $40. It's probably different now. Who knows? They change their prices all the time. And no, I don't want to see any comments about evil Amazon. I don't care. It's how I can get it. Otherwise, I'm paying $300 for the, uh, you know, fancy Bluetooth model at who knows where. Cinestill, the uh, kitchen store. I don't know. I'm not going to pay that. 40 bucks works great. That's all I need. So, as long as you have your temperature control, you're ready to go make some slides. E100, really good film. I like the amount of contrast. It retains a lot of detail across a big range. And I find the color pretty good. I've, I, I like the color palette of Kodak stuff. I know some people like Fuji better. Nothing wrong with that, as long as you get the film that you like. If you can get Fuji right now, which is kind of tough. Kodak, even that, it's, it's a little pricey and it can be hard to get. But when you get it right, it is really, really good. All right, that's going to do it for this week. Hopefully, if you are thinking about getting this kit, this gives you a good idea of what to expect when it comes in, both in terms of what's in the box and how to use it. And if you like this kind of content, again, please consider supporting in some fashion or another. It is appreciated. It is used for stuff like this. And we will see you next time.